Hello everybody, my name is Agastya Vishwanath and today we are going to be talking about Piotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky. He was a Russian romantic composer and very very influential and famous for the music that he wrote. Indeed his music is still played today very widely and is regarded as one of some of the most beautiful and emotive music um, to be written especially during that time period. He was also recognized as being one of the first major Russian composers, at least one of the first internationally recognized ones. When we look at Russian composers, we usually think of Tchaikovsky, Stravinsky and Shostakovich and Tchaikovsky was the one who predated all the others. So he really, in Russia, brought up what would become a career in composing. That was not something that was usually there in Russia before him and he was the one who gave it a high social status and he was also the one who were the first Russians to properly um, integrate Russian and European styles together to produce classical music. And as I said, he is the earliest um, Russian composer who, we, who, who lives amongst the major classical composers of the Romantic period. And one of the first internationally recognized. As I said, the music is still extremely beautiful and played today. And today I'd like to take a look at his life, his music, his achievements, and a little bit about what. Um, what what makes his music so special and what, what is it about it that people love so much. So let's begin. Peter uh, Ilyich Tchaikovsky was born in 1840 in Russia. He was born to Ilya, Ilya Tchaikovsky and Alexandra Tchaikovsky. He came from a very, very military family and due to the fact that they could get a rural posting at any point in time, being musical was practically a necessity for entertaining purposes. Regardless, um, Tchaikovsky was born with many, 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 many siblings and after his mother died and his father remarried, he was he inherited even more. And he was, though he had seven or so siblings, he was closest to his sister and his two twin brothers. Now, Tchaikovsky was a smart boy ever since in childhood. He picked, he forced the governess to teach him French and German at a very young age and by age 5 he was speaking both fluently which was a great achievement and he also took up, as I said, the family was quite musical for, for um, previously stated reasons so he also took up an interest and started learning music and by age 8 he was able to sight read better than his teacher which was as I said, a major achievement it was very clear that he was quite musically gifted his parents initially really supported his passion for music and you know, invested in him and encouraged him. However, they didn't see it as a real career path for him because at that time, composing and being a musician was a very low class job in um, Russia. Because it wouldn't be a gateway to many, too much money or resources or social status it would be classified amongst the poor. It was just not a very ideal uh, employment for a uh, livelihood. So they really discouraged him from taking it up as you know, a job. And so when he, in 1850, when Piotr was about 10 years old, he was sent out to the Imperial School of Just Prudence to study properly, get good education, and what his parents wanted to, was for him to eventually become a civil servant. While studying there, he didn't lose touch with music, however, he and his friends would often go to many concerts and would play casually jam and um, would part of the choir. So it was a very casual experience. He wasn't very devoted to music and of course devoted himself more towards his studies. Now, after having graduated from the Imperial School of Just Students, he tried, he picked up a real job and became a civil servant. And however, within a year, he realized this is not what he wanted to do. He hated all the bureaucratic nonsense that he was not something that he enjoyed at all and decided to quit the job and head towards music which was his other passion had always been and continued to be and luckily for him this was about 18, the very early 1860s when this was happening in 1859 the Russian Musical Society was founded and Piotr went there and not only did this give him a major uh, exposure to Russian music and allowed him to listen to many Russian music concerts and get a better understanding for Russian classical music, but also allowed him they provide music theory classes and he learned multiple different techniques while attending the music theory, music theory classes. And in fact, the people who founded this also went on to found the St. Petersburg Conservatory for Music in 1862. And Tchaikovsky was one of their first students. There he studied with many renowned um, composer and musicians such as Nikolo Zarambia 
and uh, Zerimbab and Anton Rubinstein and while studying there he learned about counterpoint, instrumentation, orchestration, musical theory and everything in between. Um, while <coughs> during this period and in fact quite before this period while studying in the Jesperudence Academy his mother had died uh, and this left a great emotional toll on Tchaikovsky and that would uh, what it did do is it prompted him to write his first serious piece of music. So is while he's still at the Just Prudence Academy, he writes his first serious piece of music which was the Waltz. Now fast forward to when he's studying at the conservatory, he starts composing much much more and and he starts composing properly alongside while he's learning. And as with what would, what would become characteristic of how his music was received, it was very polar I think. Not everyone loved everything he wrote, when people would listen to Tchaikovsky, some people loved it, a lot of people hated it, and um, it was a very polarized, a very mixed reaction to lots of music. Uh, a good example of this is where Tchaikovsky attempted to write his first symphony. He put it up to Anton Rubinstein a while at the conservatory to have performed there while well, studying there, and Anton said that he, Anton refused, saying that it needs major revisions. Then Tchaikovsky went and revised the symphony and gave it to him, and Anton still found it unacceptable. This left Tchaikovsky very angry, of course. However, it is characteristic of how it works were usually received. Um, a very, very mixed reaction. And this mix, he didn't fully, uh, his music only became very well known and very um, positively received towards the end of his life because before that it was still remained quite a mixed reaction. And this is, of course, true while he was studying at the conservatory. Regardless, he continued to compose, and after having left the St. Petersburg Conservatory, he got an exceedingly amazing job offer from Nikolai Rubinstein, Anton Rubinstein's younger brother, in 1865. And this was to be a professor of music theory at, Mo at the Moscow Conservatory. Now, this was not a very high paying job, yet Tchaikovsky was quite interested in it and went ahead and did it. While teaching, of course, he also took part in composing some music and, and also, in addition to composing music, took up music criticism as another hobby, you critique lots of music and well, his, his criticism survived to date and what we've been able to glean from them is that he really liked Beethoven, he thought Beethoven was, uh, you know, amazing pieces of music, he thought Brahms was overrated, didn't like Brahms all that much and while, and he liked some, some parts of uh, Wagner's Ring of Fire but he called it overall a unlikely no overall unlikely nonsense. So that that's what he called it. So as you can see, he did. He was quite uh, well present in the classical music world, and it was in the Saint Petersburg Conservatory and also while working here in the Moscow Conservatory that he got an exposure to European music. Because before that, even at the Russian Music Society, and prior to that, he was only talking, he was only introduced to what was Russian classical music at that period of time. And here, when he goes to one conservatory to study and one conservatory to teach, he gets an exposure to European uh, classical music, that means German classical music, English classical music, and all, all the composers we know and love, and came from Europe, most most of them, right? And this was very important for Tchaikovsky because when you look at his style, it was a very clear blend between European styles and Russian styles. You usually see it as European, a mix of European musical ideals with a tinge of Russian in it. He very, very, very neatly balanced both European musical ideals and Russian musical ideals. And this was very much not very nationalistic Russian music, you know. That's not what identified Tchaikovsky, no, it was more. Um, it was a mix of those ideas and that's what makes his music so amazing today and what gave him a lot of traction in his later years. And this, this came from his exposure to European classical music while in either conservatory. Anyways, as I said, his music, the music that he wrote, uh, was mixed, was had mixed reactions. As I said, it was not very well achieved. He didn't rise to stardom immediately, right, uh, um, while, while composing them. Because as I said, it's very mixed reviews from people. However, um, what, uh, what allowed him to have a following and a lot of people enjoyed his music and what eventually gave him lots of fame later was changing tastes in the Russian audience. Before this 1850-1860 period, Russian audiences loved very, um, very uh, showy pieces of work, very <coughs> fiery pieces of work with bunch of bomb, with lots of bombast, as I said, these bombastic virtuosic pieces of work which were about showing off and uh, stuff like that. However, 
um, they slowly grew tired of all that bombast and wanted to listen to the music itself and appreciate the comp- compositions. And they just just started changing their tastes and wanted something more um, filled with beauty, more subtle, more um, emotive, and maybe a little bit introspective. Um, and these are all the things that describe Tchaikovsky music. It is just what is what characterizes music then, and it continues to characterize it now. It's subtle, it's introspective, it's beautiful. And that's emotive. That's what they were looking for. So this change in taste that the Russian audience was experiencing around the 1850s and 1860s was allowed Tchaikovsky's music to remain relevant even while it had a mixed um, mixed reaction from the public, and what gave him a lot of traction moving forward. It was also um, conducted by instrumentalists like Hans von Bulow, who really enjoyed, um, who really liked Tchaikovsky's work, and who played a lot and popularized it a lot. And, Perform it, get it performed a lot. As I said, Hans von Bulow popularized would play Tchaikovsky's first piano concerto himself and would conduct multiple, uh, multiple of his works. And coming to his music during this period, he composed his first piano concerto and his Romeo and Juliet symphonic poem, which is which are two very very famous works by him. And it was some of his most earliest very famous composing that he did was around this period. It was the first piano concerto, amazing piece in its own right, and the Romeo and Juliet symphonic poem, which many people remember a lot of tunes from that and it was quite an amazing piece of music, especially for that time. Now before we move further, further into Tchaikovsky's life, let's, I want to take a moment to talk about his personal life because that's, this is where it really becomes very important. Now, I haven't mentioned this so far but it's very central to Tchaikovsky's um, life story. I wouldn't say central but it's an important aspect of it and that's that he enjoyed the company of men and that was very much not accepted in Russia at the time. Um, it wasn't you would not get the death uh, sentence for participating in such acts, but it was extremely discouraged and he was thus very restricted throughout his entire life. However, he did have multiple important women in his life. <coughs> the first of these women were the Sirizi Artot. Forgive me for my terrible pronunciation, but uh, they had fleeting romance, they quickly grew very infatuated with each other and there was a fleeting desire from both of them to get married, no engagement was made. However, because Artot refused to move to Russia, along with a couple of other reasons, that engagement quickly dissolved. However, Tchaikovsky notes that Artot was the only woman he really ever loved. The second very important woman in his life was Antonina Milko- Milakova and he actually did marry Antonina. However, the marriage was a disaster and imploded within a couple of months. They were not compatible personality-wise, and of course, for sexual reasons, the marriage was an utter disaster. And as I said, it, 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 both Tchaikovsky left it, it was an emotional turmoil for the duration of it, and it was disbanded. It was dissolved about one and a half months into the marriage. And but around this time, that Tchaikovsky gains correspondence with Nazarenza von Meck. Nazarenza was. Um, a very very important woman in Tchaikovsky's life. He was not a rom- she was not a romantic interest though they would exchange letters and they became very very fast friends. And Narenza really liked uh, Tchaikovsky's, a lot of Tchaikovsky's work and he really appreciated, she really appreciated his music. So she became her his patron for the next 13 years. She would send him money in exchange for him, fo- giving him time to focus on his compositions. He would receive um, monthly instruments of uh, money from Narenza and <coughs> In addition to being you know, his patron, he being under the Renzo's patronage, they were the best of friends, they, as I said, they communicated prior, or like primarily through letters, and they also made a weird rule not to meet in person at all, which was, which is still not fully understood why they chose to do that. And it was also hinted at that Renzo had some romantic interest in Tchaikovsky as well. However, um, it is also quite, um, it is also quite, agreed upon that she knew about Tchaikovsky's situation and thus did not try to impose herself upon him or um, try to propose to him or try to seek his heart. No, she kept her distance. And that's something that was very great for Tchaikovsky because she she is the the woman that he could call a friend. Regardless, they were in very close correspondence for the next 13 years and uh, she was was no doubt a very big influence on Tchaikovsky and what allowed him to make, to enter the new phase of his life. Now, around the 1870s, Tchaikovsky goes touring and traveling around Europe and entering places like Germany and France. And it is he goes with his brother. And it is here where he composes some, on this journey, and he premieres the Tourist journey, he composes some of his most famous works. Swan Lake, a piece, it was composed in this area. Egg in Onegish, 
was also composed during this, year, uh, this period. So his fourth symphony was also composed during this period, and the violin concerto was also composed in the 1870s while he was touring these European states. And this is very important. And all his works are hallmarks today, and they're very, very famous pieces. And uh, what we just what, what some of Tchaikovsky's Tchaikovsky's most famous works, and this was composed in this 1870s period while he was touring around Europe in foreign land. Um, during the late 1870s and early 1880s, he also did a lot of solo traveling around rural Russia, and this was um, something. This is one of his most reclusive times. He wasn't coming into social life, social light all that much, and he was also not composing all that all that much. But ironically, it was here where he had a lot of here where he skyrocketed to fame. So now the 1880s period is where he really took traction and became not only a domestic but international. Composer and a star, you know that's when he his fame started to skyrocket, and we see him, you know, join the ranks of composers like um, Brahms and Dvorak and perhaps even Beethoven and Mozart. So this is his 1880s period when he really skyrockets to fame. And what's ironic about that is because he was not composing that much in that period. Regardless, um, soon after this happens, he composes a volume of m m other works which are once again very very famous. His 1812 overture. Very very famous work by him. Some consider it to be the most famous, most notable work by him. Uh, it was it is describing Napoleon's defeat. It's a symphonic work, and it even includes cannon fires, which is quite, quite something. And he, while it was met with extreme delight by the audiences, everyone loved it. And it was, as I said, very still today we when we think of Tchaikovsky, we often we often picture this piece. Um, he was wrote to Lorenzo that he had not put much love or warmth into it and didn't expect it to get much of a reception. He was not very proud of it, to, so to speak. Um, in addition to the Incredible Witcher, he also wrote his piano trio in A minor um, in remembrance of his then passed away master Nikolai um, <coughs> Rubinstein. He passed away around that time uh, and in the 1880s and he wrote this in remembrance. And once again, one of his most famous works. Still played today, one of his most beloved works then and now, his A minor, his piano trio in A minor. Then we come to Tchaikovsky's later life in um, during the late 1880s and early 1890s. And part of why Tchaikovsky started you now catapulting, getting getting more and more fame was due to a author known as Fyodor Dostoevsky. And what Fyodor Dostoevsky did was he gave a very important speech. I won't go into it all that much, but he he stressed um, the idea of unity in that speech, and this resonated with a lot of Russian people. And how this is relevant to Tchaikovsky is that they started to be much less critical of his style. So a lot of people were unhappy with Tchaikovsky's work initially because it, as I said, was not very nationalistically Russian. You couldn't identify with it as you know Russian classical music. No, it was much more international type music. As I said, he took many ideas from European um, classical music and combined that with Russian, um, the way Russian music had evolved at that point in time to produce his own signature style. And this is something that's very important. This gave rise for many, to many other Russian composers trying to do a similar thing, not being bound by the shackles of only composing Russian music. And uh, he created a very neat balance of both European and Russian ideas. And why this was frowned upon by many people initially as um, as as more as they started stressing the idea of unity and especially joining, uh, especially uh, holding Europe in high regard, um, people became more and more accepting of this music and looked at it with a much more open mind, and that allowed it to that allowed a lot more people to realize how beautiful it is, and then resonated with many more people. So Dostoevsky played a major role in Tchaikovsky's um, rise to fame. Uh, now, it was around this time that Tchaikovsky got tired of traveling, so he decided to settle down. He bought a house which, where he could easily um, access both Moscow and uh, uh, Saint Petersburg, and he also was the unofficial, but official court composer, the premier court composer. And he was in league with the Tsar. He became very famous. He, they, they had a very good relationship, and this is why he was held now. His social status was skyrocketing. But not only his fame, because he was in league with the Tsar, and the Tsar gave him. Um, a very ha very hefty yearly pension as well, and so this, uh, he was not officially named the premier court composer, but he, he, was, he was informally essentially that, and he was once again his social status skyrocketed from then on. Um, around this time in the 1890s, now in 1890s we enter this uh, this new decade. 
he started getting a lot more into Russian music for some reason. And he uh, though he was not much of a social item himself, he started to enjoy a lot more Russian music and started to conduct a lot of it. And he gained a new uh, interest in conducting. And he indeed premiered his fifth symphony himself, conducting it himself. This prompted him to do a major tour around Europe and even in, uh, in the early 1890s even went to America and conducted there. That's only one only time he went to America. Uh, during this time of touring and moving to and going to America momentarily, he composes his Sleeping Beauty, uh, Queen of Spades, and his ever famous Nutcracker, all composed by him. He, while the Queen of Spades was once again got a very mixed reaction from a lot of people, he believed that some of the best music in all of all of opera is, is contained within that opera. So it is. He was quite proud of the work, to say the least. Then he comes back to. Uh, Russia and he, in 1893 is given an honorary doctorate in music from the Cambridge from Cambridge University in the UK and at this point he is one of the most prominent composers in the in like in the international context I would say in the world because at this point the world basically means Europe and Russia and perhaps a bit of America and in the international context he is hugely famous and he is on schedule to perform a sixth symphony which is eighth which is another amazing work the pathetic symphony he is um, scheduled to tour all around Europe and the uh, uh, to do all around Europe. However, in 1893, unfortunately, um, nine days after the premiere, he dies. Um, age 53. Now, his death is also surrounded in quite a bit of controversy. You wouldn't expect that, but it is. And so, the official reason given as to why Tchaikovsky died was that he went to a restaurant and ordered. Um, unboiled water, or he was given unboiled water, and at that point uh, there was a major oversight on his side. Um, at that point, there was a cholera epidemic going around Russia, and the water was indeed supposedly affected with cholera, and he contracted it a week later and died from cholera. And that was a major, of course, that's what killed him. But there's lots of other theories because this was not very well supported and lots of other people have come up with many theories. Some suggest that he was ordered to commit suicide by the government because they found out that he was homosexual and he could, they couldn't have this going out into public because Tchaikovsky had had such high regard and represented so much for Russia at that point. Another, another theory that he committed suicide of his own accord due to, the, due to similar reasons. Um, uh, and a lot of this is motivated by his sixth symphony um, because that seems as if there's some deeper meaning to it. Regardless, you know, of course, it's, it's always a motive, but it seems as if it's almost a suicide note. And when asked about it, he did say that there was some hidden meaning behind it, but he wouldn't tell anyone. <clears throat> I wasn't going to reveal it as of yet. And of course, he died shortly after his premiere. So his death is surrounded in quite a bit of controversy, the multiple theories around his death. However, it is more or less confirmed that he died from cholera and he died in 1893. And once again, significance is not to be underrated. He brought Russia as part of classical, no, Western classical music because at that point Russia was not part of the Western classical music world at all. He is one of the most prominent Russian composers and one of the first uh, internationally recognized Russian composers. And his, uh, his willingness and his um, a willingness to combine both European and Russian ideals into the way he composed gave a lot of other free, uh, composers like Stravinsky and Sostakovich the freedom to do the same because that was a very bold move and that's what prompted a lot of mixed reactions to his work in the beginning as I mentioned but um, by doing this he gave a lot more he gave a lot more confidence and more freedom to Russian composers that would follow him as I said like Sostakovich and like Stravinsky um, and his music is as I said just it, it speaks for itself. It's extremely. It is. It, it's in complete contrast with the music that, as I said, was predating, predating it. It's not bombastic. It's subtle. It's the melodies are beautiful. They're introspective. They're emotive. You know, they're they're emotive and they're subtle. And there's, of course, when people want to describe Tchaikovsky, they usually word they use the word beauty. That's a very overused word, but I think it very well fits into what Tchaikovsky's music sounds like. If you listen to his operas, if you listen to his ballets, if you listen to his um, concertos, and even when he is going, as I said, his his music is roughly characterized with a romantic period as well. It was not focused on it was it was indeed very emotive. He did want to carry uh, emotions across to the audience, but 
unlike what Beethoven, for example, did, he did it in a very subtle way. Beethoven was very upfront with the way he portrayed emotions. His okay, work is um, very upfront. It's joyful. It's sad. Um, <coughs> you can feel it. But then his work is much more subtle in the way it conveys stuff, and that's and that's his, his purity is also something to marvel at. So I, I would really recommend you listen to his music yourself to gain a better understanding for what I have tried to convey through words. One quote by Tchaikovsky sums up, I think, what he was aiming to do with his music quite well. Oh, how difficult it feels to make people see and feel in music what they see and feel in themselves. So maybe perhaps that's what he was aiming to do with his music. Regardless, it remains very beautiful, very emotive, very subtle, very introspective. Um, and that's why it still played today. It didn't fall out of fashion after he died. His music, he only got more famous after he died. And yeah, it's indeed still played today for that reason. And his music continues to captivate audiences till date. Well, that's the short, uh, short brief on Tchaikovsky's life and his music. Hopefully, you learned something valuable from it. And I will see you next time.